Hi there, and thank you for watching. Uh, I've had many, many responses over the last week in particular concerning my lecture that I uh, did in August where I made some predictions. All right, now we get to hear Alexander Retroff explain why his predictions failed. focused on the predictions and passed over a lot of the information that was in the lecture. Which is completely untrue as I addressed damn near everything you said in my video and not just the prediction dates. Uh, the dates are the qualifier so we can check to see if you're right or not. Uh, I'll put a link below if you want to go watch it again. But because of some of the wonderful responses I've had for what I've done, um, I'm now responding to those people and also to respond to the critics as well, who have gone on quite a vicious attack on uh, a number of grounds. First things I'd like to say is why we did the lecture that we did. We didn't do it to make money, we didn't do it because we wanted to make ourselves famous. We just had a message and we wanted to put that message out there for those people who were ready to hear it. Same here. I didn't do it to make money, I didn't do it to become famous. I had a message to put out and so I just put it out there, that you're full of crap. We knew that the majority of people weren't ready to hear it. And we knew that most of the people that we were targeting were in fact people who were very spiritually aware, but perhaps not completely awakened. So we weren't expecting to do a massive broadcast to the world. So you've got this important information from this supernatural source that's telling you that all these people are about to die, and you're not going to do a broadcast to the rest of the world and let everybody know, warn them what's happening. You expect us to believe that. You only want, this was only for just certain people you know, who are ready for this information. You know, screw all the people in the Pacific Rim that was about to go that you said was, they were all dead. You know, forget about them for a minute. See, because what people say and what people do is a reaction through their filter. It's how they see the world. So we've had responses of people that have been good. We've had responses of people that have been bad. And we've had responses of people that have been ugly. We're just a mirror. These events have just been a mirror. You're not a mirror. You're not a window. You're not anything of the sort. You're just a guy selling magic beans to people. And when other people ask to see these magic beans or to see the beanstalks that grow from them, you can't produce them. And then when those people go out and tell people, hey, you might not want to listen to this guy because he's full of crap, then you go out and say, oh, they're just not ready for it. And, you know, this is just who they truly are. They're just spiteful people. When it's complete bullshit, when asked for any kind of evidence, all you can do is provide stuff like, oh, I got a friend that's the president of the Navy, or a buddy of mine who's stationed on Battlestar Galactica, you know, he told me it worked, so therefore, whatever. You're full of crap. We were given a date, and we were wondering why things weren't happening the way that we'd been shown they were. See, that's the difference between you and me. I'm not wondering at all why these things didn't happen. I know exactly why they didn't happen. You're full of crap. We now know why. Me too. The purpose of the date being wrong was so that people's true self would be exposed. The people who have been truly in heart have supported us 100% all the way through. They know that these events are going to happen as well. But look at some of the reactions of some of the other people. The vitriolic, spiteful, bitter reactions. This is people's true self. So the wrong date was given on purpose by this supernatural source that he claims to communicate with only for the sole purpose of finding out who is so open-headed that if they lean their head too far to one side, their brains will fall out on the floor and who's skeptical enough that they know better than to believe any old bullshit that they hear that comes along. This is almost as good as uh, Harold Camping and his uh, invisible return, you know, spiritual rapture that just happened back in May, or even the Jehovah's Witnesses' invisible return of Jesus back in 1914. This is nothing more than cognitive dissonance and trying to explain away why he was wrong. So if a source is giving him false information, even if it's true, now we know we can't trust it at all. So anything that he puts out, we can't trust. We know because they are, according to him, purposefully misleading people. This is how they react. For those of you who went out there and tried to help your friends by warning of this, tried to help your family to make them informed, 
How did they react? Are they now ridiculing you, laughing at you, treating you like an idiot? Boy, I sure hope so. So maybe now you'll take the advice of people who have actually been proven correct in the past instead of just any old charlatan that comes along saying that he talks to the spirits or whatever when he has no evidence for it. And when put to the test, he's actually been proven wrong. My lucky, lucky chicken bone has an excellent track record against these guys. <laughs> you know, So when, when your credibility is worse than a chicken bone, something is the matter. Do they really love you if that's the way they treat you when you were trying to help them? Of course they do. And you are in no position to question that. When people are first approached with this sort of thing, reason is the obvious answer right off the bat. But when reason doesn't work, then it's time to kick in a little bit of humiliation and see if that works, you know, once reason has failed to uh, make a dent with some of these people. So just because somebody gets ridiculed, it doesn't mean that the person hates them or doesn't love them or anything like that. They're trying to get through to them. Have a good look at the way people have reacted to this. That's what this is about. Please do. And check the track record of the people who have ridiculed and mocked this person versus the track record of this person. I'd like to direct a, a few comments to the different groups of people. To those of you who have showed incredible spiritual awareness and wisdom and love. Actually, you can cut the bullshit with the wisdom and love and all that because that actually has nothing to do with what you're talking about. Basically, you, you're wanting to say to all the people who believe my bullshit and are stupid enough to keep on believing me. I'm grateful to have met you, to have spoken to you, and to still be communicating with you. You're an inspiration to not just me, but to many others. And to those of you who have just gone on the attack, it's not me you're attacking, it's yourself. To those of you who have acted in unlawful and defamatory manner, you'll be hearing from my lawyers, uh, and you have to be responsible for your actions. Uh, that's okay. That's just the way life is. I've been responsible for mine. I've stand up, stood up, spoken my truth. Just a quick point of contention here. If it's not true and it doesn't come true, you haven't spoken the truth. And in that, I've tried to assist people who are ready to be helped. If that's my biggest crime, then I'm guilty 100%. Actually, you're guilty of fear-mongering and spreading false information. Knock it off, dipshit.